those are the interviews. The interview uh, of Ms. Pearl George. So, um, Ms. George, you're originally from Baton Rouge, correct? Yeah, I was born and lived here in Baton Rouge, in the Poe area. Uh, I grew up in a house without a father. I was raised by a single mother. Uh, I grew up in a house that was four of us. My mother had four children by herself. And at that time, it wasn't a such thing that black people had a swimming pool. And I would pass by the city park, and I would ask my mother why we could not go to that park. And she says, colored people aren't allowed there, it's just white only. And I, used, I would tell her, I said, well, mama, you pay tax. She said, yes, we do. She said, but colored people still cannot go there. And my mama says, maybe your children, children, or somebody might swim in that pool. Maybe not you. I said, Mama, I'm going to the city park one day. I said, I'm going to swim in that pool. And what actually got me concerned about human rights, and especially black people's rights, was I can let me go back a little further. I lost my husband during the Korean War. And what really hurt me so bad, I said, here's my husband who my daughter's father, who had gone to war, wasn't his choice to go, he was drafted, he didn't want to go. You know, here's a man who have sacrificed his life for his so-called country. And here his daughter couldn't go to a swimming pool at this age, it was for white only. And when my daughter, she wanted to go swimming, that done something to me. I went to a church, Reverend Jokes was the pastor of the church. Reverend Jokes was very uh, active in civil rights. I went to him and he said, well, Ms. George, he said, we're having a meeting here tonight with the NAACP. And if you have some complaints, why don't you come over and let's talk about it? And I did. And at that meeting that night, I decided the next morning that I would carry my daughter to the city park to swim. Somebody, don't know who, informed the police department that we would be at the city park to swim that day. And when we got to the city park, they had paddy wagons there, they had sheriff's office there with rifles, with city police, state troopers, and I guess every law enforcement agency that you could name. But it was about 50 of us. You would think that we were some type of animals. At that time, we was nonviolent. And any time you said that a demonstration was being held, people right away knew that it wasn't any violence. They was there with their guns and billy clubs waiting to receive us and ask us where we were going uh, as we walked into the city park. And I told them that we was going to swim. I chose to fight. And I said, well, if I'm going to die, let me die for something that black folks would enjoy some of the things that I couldn't enjoy. <laughs> 